Hello and welcome to my channel where I do guides for Home World Tutorial 2019. Today we are going to take a look at sharpening. We're going to try the different ways to sharpen inside of Home World Tutorial 2019. We're also going to try and identify what kind of image you will use, what kind of sharpening for. <laughs> yeah, and let's just start this right away. So. We are going to start with the first way to sharpen your image inside of Om1 Photo 2019 and that's under the tone and color here. That should be pretty fine. Let's go and try the structure. Actually, I had some structure on already. So this is with zero structure and if we go up to like 30, you're going to see the difference right away. That's actually 50, but anyway, you saw the difference. So this is without structure and this is with structure. So it's bringing in some nice sharpening and you can of course combine that with the details uh, pane that's down here. So if we go up on the amount, I always start at zero on the sharpening by the way. So I always, pull all of these sliders back to zero. But let's go up on the amount. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard and keep holding it down while you go up on the amount. So, so you're gonna see that it starts to sharpen. You can't go too high though. So you need to watch out for noise. So there's starting to be some color noise over here. So if you go too high, you're gonna create noise and if you go even higher, you're gonna sharpen the noise. So that's really stupid if you <laughs> if you do that. So that's something you wanna avoid. And let's go up on the amount there. Even more, even more, even more. Yes, okay, so two around here. That's a lot, by the way. And let's check without the details. So we can see that the details pane are actually sharpening this image and doing a pretty good job. But we had to go up pretty high before we got some details here. But let's go and work a little more with this image. So we don't want to sharpen everything here. We don't want to sharpen the bokeh effect. Doing that would uh, kind of ruin the image and it will kind of bring out some color noise. If you go overboard with your sharpening, you will soon see that you're bringing out problems to the image. And of course we don't want to do that. So let's go and try and remove the sharpening on the bokeh effect behind there. So I'm actually going to zoom in even more here so you can see it clearly. You should be able to see that it's trying to sharpen over here and around the bokeh effect. And also the grass here. And I don't really want to sharpen that too. So I'm going to try and avoid to sharpen that. But let's just try and see what happens if I go up on the threshold. You can hold down your Alt or Option key while doing this as well. So we are going to do that. And right away you can see that the, by pulling up the threshold slider, we are removing sharpening from here. But we are not removing sharpening from here. Or we are removing sharpening from here, but this is already so sharp. So when we remove sharpening from the amount by using the threshold, this will still stay sharp. But this isn't sharp at all, so we are going to see that we are kind of removing this from the sharpening. So go in and hold down the Alt or Option key and drag the slider up. And to around here. Now let's take a look at the straws here again and see if we still are sharpening over here. 
So I'm holding down the Alt option, just slide slider <laughs> up or down, and I'm actually gonna go up to around. No, let's go down a little bit again. So the most important thing for me to sharpen here is what is already sharp and that's this part of the image and a little bit here so I think that's good let's look at before and after let's go in even more and this is before and this is after so I'm going down on the threshold a bit and up on the sharpening so I can make sure that you see the difference here. So this is the before. It's kind of blurry here now. And this is the after and it's starting to get sharp and nice here. This image is now over sharpened. So I would either go down on the details here or down on the structure up here. I'm going to go down on the structure. So always go in at 100% when you are sharpening. And if there's not too much noise, go in even further. Go in so you can clearly see that uh, the details aren't distorted or something like that. So let's go back into 100%. And I want to say something about this little box or pane or whatever we're going to call it. I don't like to use that. I I would rather use uh, the sharpening in under effects or local instead because that gives me a lot more control and the sharpening under effects is a lot more precise. So that's the reason why I always do like this. So I'm going to disable that box and let's go into the effects. Now here we have another sharpening box so let's go in and activate this one this is without sharpening and this is with sharpening and under here you have a ton of options so we're gonna go for fixed focus and that's a bit too powerful sharpening for most images I would never use fixed focus I would maybe try screen instead i think that looks a bit better actually so let's check the before and after on the screen yeah as you can see that looks really nice we didn't even have to move any sliders so we could do something with the threshold slider remove the noise over here uh, or remove the sharpening that's going on over here but inside the effects and this sharpening module your alt or option key will not do anything so you don't have the black and whitish thing to relate to when you're trying to remove sharpening or when you're trying to sharpen it's not doing anything so just so you know but you can go up on the threshold let's go yeah that fixed it problem gone so as you can see we have the possibility to protect what lies in the shadows so mostly over here so if I go up all the way on that slider this isn't affected by this filter anymore so let's go down again and you can clearly see that the noise color noise is back if you go up all the way again it's gone so sometimes sharpening tries to sharpen the sky and you don't want that the sky aren't sharp when have you ever seen a sky that is really sharp really so the sky usually lies in the highlights so you can try and protect that as well and that did a really good job of course when you remove sharpening from the highlights you are also removing sharpening from the highlights that are on the object you're trying to sharpen so let's see if uh, we can actually see a difference here. I'm just going to go in just a little bit more here. So let's go all the way down on the highlights. Yeah, and that brings out even more sharpening. So if we were to balance it, 
this is kind of nice sharpening and we are kind of removing the worst up here so if you go back all the way so it's even more noise and if we go up a little that noise is is practically gone uh, under here you have the different types of sharpening i like the progressive i find that this kind of sharpening does the best job uh, so you have the unsharpened mask i think that's from photoshop that gives you a lot of sharpening so if we go down on the amount and let's protect some of the shadows and this is such a powerful sharpening so i don't think i'll ever gonna use the unsharp mask uh, it's just too powerful it's so much easier to just go for progressive and you have the sharpening done for most parts anyway you also have the high pass and that's also really powerful sharpening so if you go up on the amount and let's not protect the highlights of the shadows you can clearly see that it's sharpening a lot so let's check the before and the after so i'm actually going to bring that up totally crazy here so of course when you're sharpening you want to try and avoid sharpening stuff that uh, it doesn't look good when sharpened or if you take a picture like this one you want to kind of keep uh, the bulky as a bulky you don't want to sharpen it and if you kind of want to bring in really heavy sharpening you can try and do it with different kind of masks so we are actually gonna try with a gradient so i'm going over here and up here you have the different shapes so i'm going to select center and i'm con gonna drop it yeah to around here i guess let's not do any preset here so let's drop it there and as you can see it's pretty <laughs> wide so you're just gonna bring it in to something like this maybe also bring in the top here So on this circle, we're going to have kind of a fade effect. So our sharpening is going to go uh, be mostly in inside the circle and go and feather out to the background. We are actually hiding the sharpening now instead of having it on our object. So let's invert it. And our sharpening is on our motif and no sharpening is outside here. You can see that on the mask because black conceals and white reveals. So that's one way to do this sharpening. You can also try and do it with the luminosity mask. So what we can try and do is to do it under a color range and decide the mask that way. So that turned out pretty good actually but let's click here this actually turned out well so the color range is what you decide with this slider so it should be pretty obvious what color range does if I go down we have less color range so we are going to sharpen more precise from the color I picked up here so if we go down even more, it's soon only going to be the colors that are matching the color I picked up here, but within a really small color range. So we want to sharpen more here. So I'm going to go up and we are sharpening around here, but it's not too much actually. And we could try here and paint it out if we want to. The stuff we don't want to sharpen so if i was to go on my brush i could select paint out under the mode and let's say i went up to around 18 on the opacity and have a pretty big feather and just 
paint out the sharpening over here. And you can go all up on the opacity as well, and you can even tweak the feather. So I'm just painting out. So we are concealing the sharpening on the mask here. So black conceals and white reveals. Always remember that rule. So now the sharpening filter should only be applied where it's really whiter. So since we remove a lot with our masking brush, we can actually tweak the color range again and maybe go up so we have even more details here. And you can clearly see that we're starting to pull in the skies and just paint it out. So this painting out might not work for a lot of your images if you need to be more precise and then then you might have a problem then you need to try with a luminosity mask and try and figure out just right where it should be and it's it's kind of difficult when you have a picture like this where the color tones are so close to each other now uh, let's hit O key on your keyboard and let's look at the sharpening now so it should not be any sharpening over here so I'm going to go in a bit on the picture here and let's go down like this and let's click and check the before so this is without any sharpening and this is with sharpening so you can clearly see that we succeeded hiding this part of the image from the sharpening effect so that's really nice. So the sharpening is active now. And this is just the default dynamic uh, contrast preset or filter. So I'm just going to hit that button. And you can clearly see that it, this also sharpens. And if I go surreal, it's going to sharpen a lot and create a lot of contrast. So that's basically what this filter does. It creates a, a contrast in the micro contrast. So it goes for the smallest pixels and try to do some sharpening or tweak the contrast between the lighter pixels and the darker pixels. So it kind of separates those pixels from each other, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So we have a dynamic contrast on surreal, but let's disable the sharpening and it doesn't look just as bad as it did but it still looks bad in my opinion but let's check without the dynamic contrast so you see that we can clearly do a lot of sharpening with dynamic contrast and i use dynamic contrast a lot uh, this is one of the filters i love the most in all of Futuro. let's check the before and after this is before and this is after let's say i'm happy about that let's say i want to paint out this from a sharpening or dynamic contrast i'm just gonna do like this let's put it on 100 opacity and paint that out so i don't want to sharpen over here but let's say i think it's still too harsh here so I'm going to drop another dynamic contrast filter like this and I'm actually going to go down and copy this mask from the first dynamic contrast filter so I hit copy and then I go in on the mask and I show hide masking options and click on the paste button and <laughs> then I hit invert and now you see we brought out some sharpening here and that's not what I want to do but if you see here this dynamic contrast filter is all around here but let's say I want to do some softening instead so I go to natural and I go into the negatives and you see we are creating even more bulky effect here so you could do go into the extreme here as well and we have a really nice bokeh going on <laughs> right there so if we go to yeah let's go to 100 again so this is without the blur mask 
and this is with the blur mask. So nice bulky effect going on there and you could go around and kind of paint that in or oh, actually I painted it out now <laughs> but if you hold down the alt key you can paint or option key you can paint it in so I could go around here and create a nicer bulky effect with the same filter that we use for sharpening <laughs> so this is a pretty powerful way to work with dynamic contrast no dynamic contrast doesn't always work sometimes you need to use the sharpening tools sometimes you need to go into the local filters and do some structure so just be aware of that that sometimes it doesn't work as well as for example sharpening does yet again this is one of the filters i use the most there so i'm just going to remove the dynamic contrast and we are going to check out another way to sharpen here and that's using the tone enhancer so the tone enhancer is another powerful filter you can adjust the tones but you can also do sharpening by going into the details and clarity so let's zoom in here a little bit uh, let's try that again okay so under the tone enhancer you could try and separate the tones more with contrast if you wanted to <laughs> that also brings out some sharpening and then you go down to the details and let's bring that up pretty much here pretty heavy to around there that's almost the max and let's do some clarity to around there and then we can check the before and this is the after so that's the filters but let's go into the local adjustments and try and sharpen here let's add an adjustment and let's reset the exposure here and let's go up pretty heavy on the structure and some on the contrast and maybe down some on the black so we create even more contrast and maybe down some on the haze and as you can see nothing's happening this is because the mask is black so we either need to paint in this adjustment with a brush or we can actually go into the mask and invert the black mask and now you see we are sharpening here and this is of course overkill but let's reset that uh, box again and let's go up on the structure that also gives a pretty nice result but I usually use structure on rocks and trees and stuff like that and I usually only paint it in but you can do it this way and this is of course now applied on the entire image so you can try and tweak the tones as you want and pretty much complete your entire image inside this little adjustment and let's bring out even more haze for some contrast let's bring up the shadows even more let's go down on this contrast it was a bit too much let's go up slightly there and let's check the before and after and let's go out to fit view and you can see that we even did some toning in here so the local adjustment is also a really powerful tool and it's a tool that I use much but I usually use it with some brush and paint in and stuff as I said but yeah this brings out some more details and structure as well so I guess <laughs> there was I was going to uh, actually do a few more images but uh, this is already starting to be a really long video but let's try here we're gonna do it a bit quicker now so this image on this image I will go in to the edit and I will simply do the details down here and that would be enough for me so this pane under the develop module actually works decent on this kind of texture uh, so with the details and low let's set it on high for now let's go in a bit on the image let's check without 
so it's not a big difference you can clearly see that something's happening let's hit the alt key on the keyboard and go up to around here and let's check the before and this is the after and if this isn't enough i would uh, just go up on the structure this isn't something i would use a lot of time on so let's check the before here and this is the after so clearly we did some sharpening you could always go up even more on the structure because it, it will sharpen a lot and you won't create that noisy artifact so let's check the before and after now so this is the before and this is the after so it's a really big difference let's go to the next image this is a shoe <laughs> and we are zoomed in pretty much here so you can clearly see where my focus point was at when i shot this image it's over here somewhere this is a bit unsharp this as well it's starting to be sharp here and it's even more sharp here so if we want to we can try and make the other threads a bit sharper so in this case i would not use structure i would actually go in and try and do it with the, the details or sharpening under the effects sorry and just put that on and immediately we can see that we got a really nice result here so that's good <laughs> and we can try and protect in the shadows so this area over here it's not as noisy because now we did introduce some color noise to remove that color noise you go into a filters and you go to a noise reduction there <laughs> this is always always too powerful so go to subtle and work out the sliders here so the noise reduction is always too powerful in my opinion but you can always go down on the opacity or tweak the slider it's up to you but you have a lot of presets in here but just make sure that you don't go overboard with the luminance and remove the details we just sharpen that would be really stupid and that's pretty much the only sharpening i would do here maybe i would actually try with a dynamic contrast filter as well and you can see that the dynamic contrast filter really did a good job on this shoe so let's check the before and the after and this is pretty sharp now this is also pretty sharp i'm not sure i would like to sharpen that so it's still sharpening the threads pretty good here even though we went down on the medium we could try and counter with going up on the small so yeah this is pretty sharp let's check the before and after this is the before and this is the after so on one photo raw 2019 is a really powerful product if you're gonna sharpen stuff <clears throat> that's a little bit about sharpening this was supposed to be a short video but it turned out to be a long one again <laughs> i'm simply not able to make short videos uh, if you want to buy your mobile photo 2019 you can do so by clicking the link in the description if you like this video please click that thumbs up if you want to watch more videos from me please click that subscribe button and maybe tick the bell anyway thanks a lot for watching and i see you again